What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the show, the podcast, episode 54. If you could believe it, we've made it to 54. No one's kicked us off the internet yet. Uh, today, my guy Corey from ShowZone is here. Now, if you guys don't know what ShowZone is, you're probably flipping wrong. You're probably not using the companion app to its greatest potential because the information available on ShowZone's website and app, which they also just launched, is this just the perfect tool for kind of figuring out what cards are hot right now, what cards maybe there's not as much action on, what cards you can get in on the ground floor on. So Corey's here today. He's one of the guys behind the scenes making the website work to the, the amazing capabilities it works. Uh, and I'm just happy to have him on today. So Corey, what is going on? Hey, Kenny. Yeah, great, great, to, great to be on the podcast. So thanks, thanks for having me. Of course. Um, I'm a big fan of ShowZone. I was telling you about it before we started recording. It's literally open on my phone all the time. I just refresh and I look to see what's hot and, you know, maybe which cards I should definitely stay away from because too many people are trying to fight for the flips. Um, but again, we talked about it pre-recording. Just kind of give the listeners just a, a, a high level overview of what inspired show zones like birth and all the work that's gone into it and how many of you guys are behind it, kind of stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. And uh, gr glad to hear you're using it all the time. That's kind of the intention is, is using it as kind of a, a partner app with with the game itself to keep, just give you that edge. Um, but really kind of the motivation was at least kind of going all the way back to MLB The Show 2018 and MLB The Show 19 was there was really not very many websites or places that you could go to where you could holistically look at the market. You could holistically holistically look at the player base. You know, you could look at everything at once. It was kind of all just in their website where you could kind of look at a player by player by player um, and you couldn't really compare players very well. Um, things were just kind of just overall difficult. I found myself kind of struggling when I was doing things like exchanges or flipping and I'm sitting there doing all this flipping on these guys or doing all these exchanges. And I'm just wondering in my head, like, am I being as efficient as I can be? Like, am I effectively spinning my stubs? I have no clue. Um, and so back then we, I kind of started this with basically just running some scripts and outputting into just some basic HTML tables, um, that I was uploading to like a little local server to my friends. And we were just kind of using the data and just playing around with it. And then eventually my friends were like, you know, you really should make this like a, a website because, <laughs> uh, you know, we're, we're making a lot of stubs off flipping, you know, we're making, uh, significant actually at the time stubs off exchanges back in, in 2018 with the immortals mm -hmm. and all those jerseys and stuff you yep. had to exchange and all those kind of things. The most expensive thing MLB the show's ever done probably. Yeah, without a doubt. And that's why that's kind of what, what was the whole motivation around it. Honestly, was, it was mostly around exchanges trying to be efficient with it, but also on the flipping side. So, um, we had all that going, um, you know, things really kind of took off with us. And then back in 2019, uh, we launched right around the Honus release, uh, you know, trying to basically add that in as a collection because everybody was wondering how, how, how much does this thing cost? I have no clue. There's too much. There's too many variables. Mm -hmm. Nobody could figure out how much it costs. So that was one of the other things that I added into the site and then kind of launched right when Honus released. Um, and then over the, over time, really, um, that, you know, throughout 2019, things kind of just slowly grew um, here and there. Um, but then in 2020, uh, things really kind of started to take off. You know, we did some interviews there with Movie Gaming TV on, on his YouTube channel. We did um, some other podcast interviews um, and things kind of started to slowly take off. And then at that point, um, I actually had somebody reach out to me that's a full-blown web developer. Um, and, and his name's Jeremy. He, he works mostly on the front end and he's kind of the one behind everything that you see there um, and all the pretty features and the app and all that kind of stuff that looks way better than what I was able to build on my own uh, in the prior years. Um, but he, he came on board um, and he's really kind of taken it to the next level. You know, we've gone to like, you know, here's this little side project that I was working on and you know, spending a couple hours a week, making sure things are running smoothly. So now we've got this full blown, you know, application and website that, that people are going to constantly. Um, and then at that same time, too, uh, knowing how this was going to grow, we also brought on a business partner as well. So we have a, a full blown business partner. So there's three of us to, in total. There's uh, myself that mostly works on the data side and gets everything right on the back end. So anything you see from a data standpoint or uh, true overalls or anything like that, that that's really where, where I come in. Jeremy's all front end um, and, and kind of the seams and, and working with everything there. 
Uh, and then our, our business partner, PJ, he really runs everything from a legal standpoint, from a business standpoint, from an infra infrastructure standpoint. So, you know, there's three of us here kind of keeping things moving, but, you know, really kind of going back to your original question, the, uh, you know, really main motivation was creating this one site that everybody could go to and can see the entire market, can see the entire player base and evaluate things um, themselves you know, so that way they can make the most effective decision decision for themselves with their stubs, with their teams, with whatever they have, with whatever they have going on. And th because there are several people behind the scenes, I know everyone kind of has their niche as far as who's doing what and when, but I mean, how much of a daily effort would you say it is for you guys? Obviously there's technology and, and stuff behind it that is helping make your jobs probably much easier. You can maybe just like set it aside and let it do its thing. But as far as how attentive you have to be, what, what does that look like for you? So, so on the site itself, the beauty of it is that we've built like a full-blown automated process. So the data you see, the you know pricing, the, the sales volumes, all of that stuff is fully automated. So everything on the front end, everything from a data standpoint, it's all just automated at all times. Um, so we don't have to constantly maintain it. But what we do spend a lot of time on now, um, you know, is, is social social channels, okay. Um, you know, kind of keeping that presence, keeping the site front of mind. Mm -hmm. We've found that to be the most important piece is, is keeping it fresh with people. Yeah. You guys uh, because, are very active. I'll give you that. Right. And, and that's, and that's the only, and that's what we've kind of learned over the years is so you'll notice on Instagram, we try to make a post. We try to post as much as we possibly can, you know, maybe once or twice a uh, once every other couple of days or once a day, sometimes, uh, Twitter, Jer Jeremy's mostly on our Twitter and, he, and he's always hammering some good stuff out there. Um, but yeah, we're always trying to stay, stay fresh and stay relevant. So we probably spend a lot of time on socials now and then a lot of time on future development. And that's kind of what uh, the key was to this new site framework and working with Jeremy is that previously in 2019 and 2020, I had to spend hours a week just keeping things up to date. Mm -hmm. um, but in this new framework, everything is automated. So now we're able to focus on new features. We're able to focus on social. We're able to focus on growth uh, instead of just trying to maintain kind of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And flipping is the thing that most people care about. That's what gets people in the door. We're going to have a larger discussion about that in the back half of the show. I think right now it's, it's probably very helpful to tell people like what else this, this site, the, the, your, your programming, what the functionality is. I mean, you have the card creator. That's a really cool thing that you see people using on social. And that's very smart on your guys' end to have people sharing your page organically by themselves. Like that's, that's marketing 101. That's fantastic. Right. Um, but what else can you do on the site that maybe people who are just giving it a passive glance wouldn't realize? Yeah. So there's a couple of things to mention outside of, outside of just the flipping. Uh, first of all, like I mentioned, like with players, um, there's there's some really cool things on there. Just every stat available for every player is right there mm -hmm. on our players portal. And then if you, a lot of people don't realize if you click view card, that pulls up that player's profile. So if you want to share that player with somebody else, you can click that view card button. You can copy their hyperlink, send it out to some other people and show them just how dominant that player is. And then as you scroll down in their player profile, I have all of their true overall ratings as well as some advanced metrics and things like that uh, pulled into there, including what those players are rated at their secondary positions. Um, and so that, that one, I can find myself every once in a while if I'm trying to build out like an events lineup that I really want to use, or if I'm trying to find like a good theme team for, you know, all Puerto Rican, you know, born players mm -hmm. or all players from the state of Ohio where I live. You know, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'll, I'll use the site here in the players board. It will really kind of filter down and, and find the players that I want. And then especially using the filters, like if, for example, you struggle with high vision players or low vision players on mm -hmm. Hall of Fame or Legend, use the filters, filter down to only players with above 90 vision and above 110 contact or something. And bam, there you go. We can you know, you call, that, we can call that the KDJ TV list because there, Lord almighty, do I struggle <laughs> hitting? So that's what I need. Yep. There you go. And, and so that's, that's what I use it for. You know, I'm, I'm a big guy of, you know, I like to have power and speed. So I'm filtering by power. I'm filtering by speed and I'm trying to find guys with that good balance. Um, and so that's, that's generally how I use it. Um, a couple other things really to mention are the collections area. 
-hmm. So right now it just kind of shows you generally how much things cost. So it doesn't have a ton of value, but a future feature that we're going to add to our pro subscription service um, that, that you can eventually sign up for is, um, is we're going to add basically these tools that, you know, today we have it, I think on, on uh, we have one listed in there from an inventory perspective that allows you to compare your inventory to the live series collection. And mm -hmm. you can see how close you are to finishing out chipper. Um, we're going to take that same concept and expand that into all of the other collections. So oh, if you cool. want to see how far you are from Mookie, uh, you know, you can, you can see that it's not just going to be kind of a pricing location. Um, and then the second, and I guess the third thing that I'll mention is, or I guess I've got maybe three and four here. Um, we've also partnered with some of the content creators uh, mm -hmm. like J Pro Gaming, then will be the show Card Art, Light Skin Chris. You know, we partnered with a few of those guys to put in the conquest maps in the rewards locations. So if you click conquest maps, we have all of the conquest maps in there and where all the reward locations are. So if you want to go through there and you just want to find out which conquest maps bring the best reward, so you don't want to waste your time. And the answer uh, so far has been none of them except the shark map. But right. know, <laughs> it, it, in the future, it will be exceptionally useful. Yeah. 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 It's been the shark map or for uh, like Team Affinity. Uh, I think Team Affinity 3, those conquest maps were actually really valuable because yeah, they, were they brought so many yeah. points. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a nice kind of hub to find everything. Um, and then the last one that probably that hasn't met, been mentioned yet is data downloads. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you click downloads there, um, we actually have a lot of people that subscribe to Pro just for data downloads because they run custom leagues mm -hmm. and they're custom leagues. They do all these like side drafts and all that kind of stuff on who can get what players and or we have players or people that like to do their own custom true overalls. Um, and so or they like to look at you know, other different data types and do their own, you know, data management uh, on their side to evaluate players that is kind of hard to do on, on a website. Um, so we have a lot of people that subscribe just to get those data downloads to help run their custom leagues or do anything else. And so it, it's, you know, we offer that for anybody that's a pro member. And all you got to do is basically I upload those every time they update the player pool. I'm adding all those CSV files out there into the data downloads page, and you can just download anything you need. Now, so you mentioned the pro subscription, so much of what the website offers, at least on the base level is just available. It's free. Right. I know the data downloads, like you said, pro subscription required. Um, what does the pro subscription, what benefit does someone have? I know maybe like the marketplace updates faster and more frequently, mm -hmm. but what else, what, what is the reasoning? What is the value behind becoming a pro subscriber? Yeah. So there's a few things. Great question. There's a few things. We've got several tiers. You've got silver, gold, and diamond. Um, silver brings a certain level of features, gold brings a certain level of features, diamond brings a certain level of features. Um, but the way that you can think about it is, is silver is kind of, um, first thing is it removes all ads. Okay. Um, so easy, you don't have to deal with ads anymore. Uh, and, the, and the second and third big things with silver is that you get access to our Discord channel mm -hmm. or our Discord server. And, and our Discord has so many people that are just market experts. Um, Ansel, Ansel Armstrong's a yep. member and so he's in there and he's talking about the market and you've got all kinds of other people in there that are just experts on these things that are literally there are people in our discord channel and I'm not joking you that are making a million subs a day in the market actively I, I wish I could I wish I was smart it's, enough maybe I'll become a pro subscriber <laughs> it's wild I, I don't know how they do it but even just for silver like that ten dollars a year or a dollar a month, like you, you're going to make those stubs back probably in the first day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and and then also one of the other things I mentioned is is that also gives you access to our partnership offers. Um, so you know we have one listed there with with one of our partners, Stub Miner, um, and so you get discounts there with any of our partners that we have. Um, and then kind of getting into gold, that's where we start to see like. This is where gold starts to be. Now you're getting additional features. You're not just getting Discord and you're mm -hmm. getting ad free. You're getting features. So uh, you get obviously Discord, you get um, ad free, but you also get one minute pricing for flipping and exchanges. So, you know, the pricing today updates on, the, on a five minute interval. Um, but with that, you can get those for you can get those at one minute, which, you know, with Team Affinity 4 coming up especially for yeah. exchanges, that one minute, that four minute difference, you people might not think that makes much of a difference, but it really does. It's we're going to talk about team affinity Four later guys and just expect all hell to break loose. That's, that's all yes. I can say. 
it makes a huge difference because if it's available on the front end of our site, we have thousands, like ten, tens of thousands of people using our site every day mm -hmm. um, and not as many as pro subscribers. So um, if you're getting your one minute pricing on that, you're getting an edge on people that are just looking at the data and not subscribing. And it's, it's making it to where you have, you know, you're probably able to actually gather up more cards um, because other people just don't even realize that those cards are a better value than the other ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last two elements of gold is really um, those data downloads that I mentioned earlier. Um, a lot of people, like I said, subscribe just for those. And then eventually as we expand those inventory management tools, uh, that'll be part of gold as well. So any of those and really any of those kind of feature things you can think about will kind of load into that gold subscription, whether it's, you know, expansion of the card builder into a squad builder that people see on my graphics and stuff that I'm uploading up there mm -hmm. all the time. You know, any of those sort of features will, will generally be loaded into gold. And then diamond, we like to think about as kind of like the, um, this is like the white glove uh, version of show zone. Okay. Um, so you get everything else that was previously mentioned. Um, but then in addition to that, um, we see a lot of content creators use this, uh, because of the card builder, we remove any of the show zone labels. So mm -hmm. then as a, as a content creator, you can subscribe to diamond and you don't, you can make your own cards in there and you don't have to spend all that time in Photoshop, you know, trying to do all this work, you can do it. And it doesn't look like you just kind of cheaped out and downloaded it off our site. <laughs> um, you know, so, so we kind of see this as like the white label. Uh, in addition to that, you know, uh, it also comes if you sign up for a full year, you get one of these free show zone shirts that I'm wearing here. Um, you know, you can get any of our, our show zone t-shirts we have out on our merch site uh, for free uh, if you sign up annually. Um, but then obviously, if you sign up for Diamond as well, you also get discounts um, on our merch just overall, um, which we're still kind of working on on that mm -hmm. framework too. But um, essentially, you can think of Diamond as being like, um, you know, white glove this is like really nice uh, a, a really nice feature for content creators and then in addition to everything i just mentioned too uh you also in our discord you get a diamond roll so your name shows up uh in, in blue instead of i think red as everybody cool. else shows up normally so mm -hmm. it kind of pops off the screen a little bit more the show zone's working on merch we're also working on merch boys and girls if you're on youtube you can see the shirt i'm wearing we're both repping our our brands very yeah. well today. Um, link is <laughs> link is in the description if you'd like to support your boy and get some uh, the show the podcast shirts uh, mugs that have our nice logo on it that my buddy from high school designed. Um, support your boy if you'd like to. Otherwise, thank you for just listening. I appreciate that too. Um, the other thing that's so interesting with, with Show Zone is the true overall. And now on this show, I'm a big proponent of use the cards you're comfortable with, like. They just dropped the awards, George Brett, personally, a yep. little upset at the attributes, still a very good card. I think they hoed him a little bit. He should have been a diamond fielder with super fractor. He's not mm -hmm. contact and power versus left are definitely not phenomenal for like someone who's like one of the, I don't know, top echelon hitters of all time. Um, mm -hmm. But I love George Brett's swing. We stand George Brett here. Mm -hmm. I will use him even though he's not great because I am comfortable using him. But what true overall is, is going to tell people is, if you really actually want to field the quote unquote best squad, we've determined it for you. And it updates when all new cards come out. So basically what goes into it, are you taking into account, like how certain attributes maybe are weighted higher than other things? Like how'd you guys mm -hmm. develop that? Yeah. And, and this is honestly probably one of the things that I get asked about the most is, is true overall. And, but what, what I kind of want to mention about true overall first is the intention of true overall when we created it. Um, so I created this, I think back when we launched in 2020 was the first time I think that this was available. Actually, no, yeah, it was 2020. It was 2020 when it, when it was first available. Um, and, and essentially the whole concept behind it was being able to compare cards next to each other. Mm -hmm. um, people uh, all the time, I, get, I, I have people say, oh, it doesn't make any sense. That Mike Schmidt's terrible. You know, I'm not going to use Mike Schmidt. <laughs> and I'm like, the, 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 the intention of true overall was really to never be a bi the Bible. Like this is the, this is what you go by. Um, this is to compare Mike Schmidt to Larry Walker. You know, mm -hmm. how, how, how do you compare a first baseman or a third baseman to a, a right fielder? You know, how do you compare these guys to one another? Um, especially when you start looking at their secondary positions and things. So that was kind of the, the intention of it. 
Um, but really the way that it operates is that you can think of it as this um, huge matrix of mm-hmm. ratings. Mm-hmm. Um, so every position, every handedness, and every attribute has its own weight. Okay. And so, you know, contact versus right and power versus right are pretty much always number one. They're always the highest thing yep. rated for you every player. You see those player. pitchers the most. Yes. Uh, they're always the highest rated for every position. Um, whereas, you know, power versus left and contact versus left are up there, but they're not quite at that same level. Um, something like blocking only applies to catchers. People yep. rated at the catcher position. Um, something like speed is more valued at second base and shortstop and center field than it is in the corners. Mm-hmm. Um, and so all of these, you can, that's why I like to think about it as like a matrix. Like, you know, there's just massive amounts of data in there. And then as these players are released, it goes through, it says, you know, based on these standard formulas and weights, this is how this player is rated, um, by true overall. And we update that every year. So right now we probably have 6,000 cards plus in our database that we've pulled all the way back from 2018 when immortals were a thing. <clears throat> And so we've been evaluating the way that SDS, SDS rates players for three years now. So these formulas are, are pretty close. Pretty and, and if you're yeah. a, if you're a data guy and you know what R squared means, our R squared value, which is basically you know how close we are from a true overall standpoint to what SDS rates players, is something like a 0.997. So pretty good. That's pretty, pretty close. Good. Yeah. It's it's almost spot on, and and it's pretty wild. Even some of them are literally a perfect 1.0, um, because it's just it's that close. Um, but that's what that's what true overall is. So I'd like to use it myself to compare players. Um, you know, like if I want to compare, like I said, Roberto Clemente to Vladimir Guerrero Jr. or Vlad, you know, Vlad Senior. Sorry, um, you know, in a position, how do those two guys compare to each other from a, an overall standpoint? Um, and then the way I, I see it too, is that this data point gets more and more value, um, as the game life cycle goes on. Mm-hmm. So very early in the game cycle, you don't need somebody to tell you that chipper is the best player in the game. Of course you don't need to. Yeah. Uh, but now you're asking yourself, should chipper even be in my starting lineup at this point? Um, how does chipper compare, you know, at third base to somebody like Miguel Cabrera? at mm-hmm. third base, you know, and that's kind of where I think the, the value of true overall comes in. And, and what the last thing I'll mention about it as well is that, um, you know, right there on the front page of the players page, we have their main true overall and everything's kind of sorted by their primary position true overall. But if you continue to scroll all the way to the right, um, we have their secondary true overall positions uh, and ratings listed as well. So we've got those players rated at all of their secondaries. So if you scroll all the way to the right and you sort, for example, by like the secondary overall catcher position, that will tell you the current best catchers in the game by true overall, including those players' secondary positions. So it it gets super value, super valuable when you're dealing with guys that have, you know, uh, you know, catcher secondaries and trying to compare those to somebody with a catcher primary. Um, That's where really where I think most of the value for true overall is. It's so interesting because. You know, the next thing I want to ask is kind of like a two part thing. It's just it's more of like a curiosity and kind of also maybe to debunk some theories and and stuff that people believe in the community. But it's like. Someone like Tim Anderson, the the tops now from the field of dreams. He is probably the type of profile that would score very well on true overall. Mm -hmm. Pretty good fielder, middle infielder, respectable speed, high contact. Not a lot of people think he's a very good card, though. Mm-hmm. And again, that's all how you use a card. That doesn't necessarily mean SDS dropped a dub, a dud, right. rather, excuse me. Um, but is that like the type of player we might be surprised who scores well in true overall? Like, who are some of those guys where you'd be like, what are you talking about? They're, they're good. Right. Yeah. And, and that, yeah, that's exactly right. And, and what I've liked the most about it is that it's kind of changed the mindset from the meta a little bit. You know, and seeing and what, what's really, I think, made it somewhat positive for me, too, is seeing I don't know if you've seen those videos put out by like scan and mm-hmm. um, and movie here recently, but those are now debunking too that swings. Yeah, it's all visual. It's all in your mind. You know, mm-hmm. the timing is all the same. Um, and so seeing that and then also pairing that with something like a true overall to me, I think it's been a really positive thing because then now you're able to say like, huh, 
you know, maybe uh, Mike Piazza is not as bad as what, you know, everybody always says. His yeah. swing is not as slow as what everybody always says. It's just messing with your mind when he, you know, strides more than has the leg kick. Mm-hmm. So you don't have that timing mechanism. But yeah, that's that. And that's kind of another great benefit of true overall is some of those guys pop off the page more when you're like, wow, this guy's attributes are absolutely amazing. I don't like his swing and maybe you'll never like his swing, but um, you know, at least maybe it gives you, lets you give the guy a try rather than just saying, well, he doesn't meet the meta, you know, the streamers don't think he's very good. So I'm not even going to let him enter my lineup <laughs> at all in the first place, yeah. which is what I hear and see a lot. So I, I definitely recommend, like you said, at the beginning of the podcast, using players that you like, that you know, work well, but don't just kind of listen to the meta um, and, and do what other people tell you you need to do play with the players that you play well with and, you know, evaluate, evaluate things in your own way. Mm-hmm. I know it's a sliding scale for a lot of this stuff, but like what would be the one or two categories as far as attributes go that actually mean the least that people might not realize don't mean as much as they think. Uh, things like discipline, play mm-hmm. discipline. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, they just really don't impact your true overall very much. Um, and it really depends on the position. Like, mm-hmm. um, if, defense at first base we I know think you just have to have a large body i think that's right. the only thing that literally matters platinum glove frank thomas that's, that's, it. that's yeah. the notorious one it doesn't matter like david ortiz never lets a ball get past him this year yep because every ball bounces off him and he picks yeah. it up and throws you out anyway the dude yep. like never played first base in his actual real life and here he is is one of the best in the game yeah <laughs> yep and and that's so those are the kind of things and, and it's all most of it is somewhat obvious in your head and, and the data kind of goes back and tells you that Um, but like one of the things that may not necessarily be more obvious is that like the position in the outfield where defense means the least is left field. Mm -hmm. And so that's why a lot of the times I always get people that ask the question when guys like Mookie are released, why is Mookie's true overall higher in left field than it is in his primary? And so literally it's because left field defense matters so much less than right field that him taking the secondary position penalty still doesn't affect him as much as the difference mm-hmm. in the way that those true overalls are rated. So maybe so that's right, why so this that is, stuff comes out. This is potentially a actual applicable question. So mm-hmm. I just got to the program boss in the sixth inning. Mm-hmm. I told you I'm a George Brett Stan, but I actually took Matt Kemp. My mm-hmm. plan is to get all three anyway, but the way I look at it is Matt Kemp has the longest value. I mean, TA four comes out next week. That could, or this week, when you're listening to this, that could literally blow up everything I just said. For now, for the next four days, Matt Kemp is like one of the guys to use. I have Guerrero, senior in right field. He's in his primary. Not the best fielding, but his arm and reaction totally make up for it. Mm -hmm. I have Mookie Betts actually in center field because I have started to enjoy using Joe Morgan at second base. I hit better with lefties, needed a lefty in the lineup. And, you know, he's not great against lefties, but we'll figure it out which means I have Matt Kemp in left. So I have two outfielders in their secondaries, even though Matt Mm -hmm. Kemp could easily just slide into his primary with Mookie in left. Did Mm -hmm. I make the correct decision to put Kemp in left based on his terrible reactions and Mookie in center? I I would say so, honestly. And and that's what I I think it's, it's for me, I really value in center field uh, reaction, speed and reaction. And, And I mean, over the years of playing this game, I feel like, the things that absolutely kill you are poor animation reaction animations Mm -hmm. when a ball is hit, you know, into the gap because you're guaranteed double at that point and you're just getting destroyed. And Kemp gets Um, a lot of those Kemp for some reason, like the balls hit to him and his feet are stuck in cement. It's not even that he jumps the wrong way. It's just that he doesn't move. Yeah. Yep. And Mookie, according to true overall, I'm looking at it right now. Mookie rates as a one Oh nine true overall in center field. So I think you absolutely made the right decision because Kemp also rates higher in left field than what he does in his primary. So yeah, big brain guys, big brain. Yeah, Listen, everything big brain. I say, big brain. Right. Yeah. So you nailed it. And, and I, I mean, I would have done the same thing because like I said, the reaction, the speed, I don't think there's much of a difference in their speeds, right? They're about I, the I same. I think they're pretty similar. Kemp actually might get a tick higher when you have mm-hmm. him super fractured. But again, the, the reaction is still so inferior to Mookie's that it, it's a wash almost. Yep. Agreed. And so, I, uh, yeah, I think you nailed it. 
I think you nailed it, but that's what I like about, you know, the whole true overall system is being able to make that comp, mm -hmm. like what makes the most sense. And, and at least it can kind of generally tell you. And who is by your true overall? I mean, we can easily look this up right now, but while you're here, who is the best number one true overall card in the game right now on September 5th? Still DeGrom. Still DeGrom. J Jacob DeGrom is still, in my opinion, the best card that's ever been released. Mm -hmm. Certainly <laughs> in, the in most frustrating. Of, yeah. Oh, yeah. In terms of, in terms of uh, at least, I guess, post MLB 18. Um, yeah. You know, obviously you've got, you know, the fake uh, Pepe, Pepe yeah. Alizar yeah. <laughs> in, in MLB 17, but, but Jacob DeGrom is just, it's ridiculous. Um, and, and especially once he gets super fractured, like it's just not even fair. I've never seen a card rated that high. The highest, I think true overall you can possibly get is something like 120 mm -hmm. or so. And at super fractor, he's at like 114.5 or something like that. So it's just, he's almost He's very close to being a perfect card. Does um, um, does true overall for pitchers factor in their hitting, or does it not count their hitting? It doesn't. Okay. Um, it would if they were in their secondary. So somebody like Otani, um, gotcha. you know, he doesn't. That's what he doesn't rate very high as a starting pitcher mm -hmm. because that he's rated as a starting pitcher. But if you rate him in left field, he rates as like a ninety nine overall player. Um, but it doesn't. Those individual positions, the way that SDS does it is that it doesn't factor in their hitting. So if you think about like um, you open up their card page on the game and it's got listed all their pitching attributes and fielding attributes, that's generally what goes into their formulas. So it's that first page uh, you see when it opens. That, yep, that yeah. first page. So if you toggle the attributes, those are you know secondary attributes that don't necessarily affect their, true, their, their overall at their starting position. My last question about true overall before we take a quick ad break. Mm -hmm. Is there still a guy who was like a day one or a, a month one release who is like should theoretically be starting in your lineup right now? Like we talked about Chipper is a Soriano or someone of that vein still like the number one? For for me, it's and this is a hot take. It's still Soriano. Mm -hmm. I, I still think he's Soriano. loaded across the board. I wish I could get his swing down because it's it's not slow, but I, I don't know. It just feels different to me he, he still dominates for me. Like mm -hmm. he's still hitting over 400. Like I've had him all year and he is still hitting over 400. He's my lead off hitter and he'll probably never leave the position. Um, but everything he does is right for me. And that's why I think it's just a visual thing for people. Mm -hmm. Like I can't hit with Joe Morgan. I'm a Reds fan. I want to hit with Joe Morgan. I'm I admittedly do learning. I don't think I can either, but I'm trying to. I can't do it. I, I literally can't do it. I can't play him when I run red steam teams. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. um, but with Soriano, it works, you know, and that's just kind of how I think everybody kind of operates. But for me, it's Soriano. Uh, I still love using chipper. Um, I still love using chipper though, like essentially back to back with Shorber because they have the opposite, yep. you know, 125 powers. Mm -hmm. So I love having those guys hitting back to back. So I think they're both still somewhat viable, but um, for me, it's still Soriano just, he does it all plays mm -hmm. second base he plays in the outfield and he, he plays hits for power outfield. hits runs for speed yeah. it's it's just he's still the man to me because i i'm still playing chipper at third the switch hitter is so valuable to me his defense he might be the worst gold fielder in the game mm -hmm. if that's possible but you know the switch hitter who crushes lefties is so valuable and then i was using eddie murray for a while but i'm back to ortiz mm -hmm. um, again i love the switch hitting bat but he lacked the like thump against right-handed pitching and Ortiz, like I said, I need to balance yeah. my lineup out, need a few more lefties. He's just as good in the field as Eddie Murray. Cause Eddie Murray is also a terrible diamond fielder for some yeah. strange reason. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean the day one guys, they can get stale. So it's good to take yeah. breaks from them sometimes. Like I did with mm -hmm. Ortiz. Um, you know, George Brett might be the guy who gives chipper a break. Maybe I still have actually never used the all-star game Vladdy because it's been so damn mm -hmm. expensive. I know a mm -hmm. lot of people like to run him at third because yep. like first base, he'll knock everything down. Yep. Um, but, you know, use the guys you're comfortable with. Take breaks if you'd like to. That's why I play a lot of events because I think that's my ability to take the break from the right mm -hmm. team. And then I just use my God squad separately. Um, but yep. true overall, guys, is, is a way that if you're curious, like Corey was saying, you want to make comparisons, that's the place to do it. You know, MLB The Show's game has a comparison screen, like when you're – taking people mm -hmm. in and out of the lineup but 
your reasoning should not be, oh, David Ortiz has four more green check marks than Eddie Murray. Like that's not a right. that's not a real comparison. Of course, Eddie Murray's going to be faster, better in the field, you know, whatever. Um, true overall is when you really want to get into it, that's that's the place to go. Yeah. And and one of the other things I'll mention along those lines too, in comparison players, I think we have extremely different archetypes is that we also added this year and I added this into the data is you'll notice there's advanced metrics in the true overall area. And I like, for example, one of the, one of the ones I'll mention is I call it the bat rating. Okay. So if you select, for example, like, um, you know, David Ortiz, like, let me, let me look up David Ortiz here and we'll find exactly what his bat rating is. Um, but essentially what I'm showing there is what overall or how much of his overall rating is driven by his bat versus mm -hmm. how much of his overall rating is driven by his fielding versus how much of his overall rating is driven by his base running. Um, and so somebody like David Ortiz, for example, there, his bat is accounts for 76.1 roughly of his over 104 true overall. Um, his fielding only accounts for seven uh, seven of his true overall points. So then if you look at somebody like Eddie Murray, he's kind of, he's going to be a lot different of an archetype. So his Probably battle may accounts, balanced. Yeah. 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 His fielding accounts for 13 of his true overall points. Um, his bat accounts for less than 72. So mm -hmm. if you like to focus on guys with a better bat at first base, you know, you can actually play around with those numbers and find, Oh, I want to use somebody with a bet more of a bat archetype, or if I want to run with a crazy fielding squad, you know, you can filter by first base, sort by that fielding overall rating, and and now you've got a, a pretty good, uh, a pretty good fielding squad or a pretty good bat squad, whatever you kind of want to roll with. But don't be fooled, guys. Their fielding is exactly the same. Yes, um, at first base. <laughs> at first base, you know, you put them in. They don't even have secondaries, but you put them somewhere else. Who knows what hilarity might ensue? Mm -hmm. um, but guys, we're gonna take a quick ad break. Actually, very exciting. We have a new sponsor of the show. Rogue Energy. I am now a Rogue affiliate. Um, Rogue Energy is specifically designed for gamers, athletes, students, entrepreneurs, people with hectic schedules like me, uh, individuals with low energy, and people who are health conscious. So much more. Rogue Energy is great, both as a pre-workout or as like a coffee or energy drink replacement. Rogue Energy was designed to be the greatest gaming drink on the planet. It strives to improve the in-game performance of gamers and streamers, uh, and it's the only gaming drink company in the world with four unique product lines that'll suit your task at hand. You're not pigeonholed into using just one thing. The low calorie, zero sugar energy formula is the perfect alternative to those sugar filled can energy drinks that your doctor probably won't like you to have. The extreme formula provides the most energy focus and sports performance humanly possible. Uh, the hydration line, which I love, offers focus ingredients without the caffeine. If you're just looking to kind of lock in and rank seasons and don't want to feel jittery and shaky, hydration formula. Uh, and finally, the shake formula. It's delicious, no calories, and it's like a milkshake. Every formula Rogue produces is designed with optimal levels of high-quality ingredients, and this is my favorite part. This is the best gaming drink as far as dissolving in water. If you don't like that chalky taste, if you don't like the the little powder supplements being left at the bottom of the, of the shaker. Rogue Energy has solved that problem. Taste, by the way, phenomenal. If you want to try the best gaming energy drink on the market, go to rogueenergy.com. That's rogueenergy.com. Use the coupon code KDJTV. You get 10% off your order. KDJTV gets you 10% off at rogueenergy.com. Rogue Energy, the world's most delicious gaming drink. Uh, next, our longest friends of the show, Thrive Fantasy. As always, Thrive Fantasy is the place to go for daily fantasy sports, and it's the only one that's based around player props. Thrive Fantasy has eliminated the need to do countless hours of research like those other DFS apps because it only asks you about the top-tier athletes in a respective sport. To play MLB games on Thrive Fantasy, choose five out of the ten player prop options to build your lineup. Each prop has a fantasy point total associated with the over or under based on how likely it is to occur. The more points a selection is worth, the riskier it is. If you rack up the most points possible, you could win a share of the prize pool. The MLB season is winding down. So if you're looking to make some money while the games are still going on, uh, use promo code the show the pod, promo code the show the pod when you sign up for Thrive Fantasy, and you'll receive an instant $20 bonus on your first deposit of $20 or more. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store or by going online to www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. 
And finally, our friends at Dugout Creative who make just the most comfortable shirts. Um, support your favorite content creators, support your favorite cities, support your favorite teams. And by using code KDJTV at dugoutcreative.com, you'll get 15% off your entire order. Go support Dimu, go support Ants, Scan, Ray Cheesy. I mean, I think every Graceful Swan, who doesn't have Dugout Create? Me, I don't yet, but you know, in time, maybe, perhaps, who knows. Uh, but Dugout Creative, KDJTV is the coupon code, 15% off your entire order. So, talking about the show zone, which also has merch that you should buy, which we will link below. Um, we talked about the many uses. We talked about true overall. Let's just get into it. I mean, everybody does things differently, but how can I or a listener best use it to flip? That's what we want. We want the stubs. We want to turn our very tiny bankrolls into moderately larger bankrolls. I mean, how, how can we make best use of shows on? Um, yeah, so and great question. I feel like everybody, like you said, kind of does it in their own way. Even mm-hmm. the people that use our flipping pages, they all use it kind of in their own, own way. The, the main thing that I'll mention again is that we probably have, you know, 10,000 plus users on a daily basis looking at this site all the time. Mm-hmm. So you have to know that what you're looking at is what 10,000 other people are also looking at. Mm-hmm. So my biggest piece of advice whenever you're looking into the into flipping is filters. Use the filters to your advantage. Um, and it, whatever you're flipping, whether it's players, equipment, or perks, you got to filter down because if you don't, then you're going to end up fighting people constantly for stubs and then you're not going to end up making much at all Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's the first piece of advice the second one is that a lot of people don't understand this about the framework of the site you don't need to refresh the page to get the pricing to update so you can either click on and off the filter button and it will update the pricing or you can just resort and the pricing will update automatically so you don't have to sit there and refresh all the time Mm -hmm. so for me that's what i'll do every once in a while is if i'm flipping something you know, I'll just toggle my filters again and it'll make sure it'll make sure that my pricing's up to date. Um, but to kind of go back to your initial question on how exactly I can make stubs, uh, my favorite way at the moment is is the passive flipping concept. And it's what we, uh, you know, partnered with Ants for that video on here mm-hmm. recently. Um, but my favorite is the passive flipping con- concept. So essentially what you, the, the idea is, is that you find cards that are within a thousand stubs or a hundred stubs, excuse me, of quick sell value. And then you buy those in massive bulk and then you sell in massive bulk. Mm -hmm. And, and, And the concept is it is no risk. You've got no risk. It's passive. You don't even care if the orders go through if they do. And then the price tanks somehow, which it's probably not going to, unless you're buying them all right before a content update or right before, you know, a roster update or something, um, you know, even if that happens, you can just quick sell and get all of your stubs except the, you know, maybe a hundred back, mm-hmm. you know? So it's, it's a no risk method. Um, people are using it constantly and again, buying in bulk and you can just constantly churn. So the way that I like to do it is go in there, go to our filters, um, you know, go to best pri- buy price of, for example, max five, max 5,100, uh, min 500, 5,000, um, and it'll filter down to those cards that are uh, selling right within that quick sell range for diamonds. Um, and it looks like right now, a lot of like tops now cards are in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, go through, use the, the shows or the, the show app, put in a bunch of buy orders for those guys and that you can just kind of keep churning through for those same prices. Let it sit for a couple hours, go out to dinner, come back, <laughs> you know, cancel your existing buy orders, put in all the sell orders for everything that went through. And probably while you were eating dinner or while you were playing a ranked seasons game or whatever, you just made, you know, probably 20 or 30,000 stubs easy all day long. And you just get used to that in a habit. And with how fast the app is, you know, it should only take you a few minutes to put in a hundred plus thousand stubs of orders that you can turn into 120 or 130 easily all day long, every day. Mm-hmm. I've so, found when I, when I use shows on, <clears throat> I, I, Personally, with stubs, I just I know this is dumb, but like I have a hard time just emptying my stub account into investments because then I look at I'm like, oh, shit, I have like 10,000 left when it, realistically you've just put it into orders. You could take them all out whenever you want. That's like a mental block for me. But mm-hmm. what I like to do, I like the quick stuff. Like if I have 15 minutes that I'm not doing anything, I'll just live on the app and just start mm-hmm. like flipping as much and fast as possible. So I like to sort by sales per minute. 
Yep. Now, when it comes to that, as we were discussing, I think before the recording, I tried to do the JT, JT Real Muto live series a couple days ago, and there were like 25 sales per minute. I was like, oh, great. There's action here. It, it'll move mm-hmm. quick. And while, yes, it was moving quick, everyone was beating each other up to get the mm-hmm. best buy and sell prices that none of the stuff ended up going through. And it eventually came to the point where there was almost no margin anymore Mm -hmm. because it was moving so quickly and people are just cannibalizing each other. Mm -hmm. So I still sort by sales per minute, but maybe I find one that's like the 10th fastest or Mm kind of in that happy medium, you know, because you also, if you're not into passive, there are a lot of cards like, uh, I don't know, let's say Vlad senior, his signature series card it might consistently be towards the top as far as profit goes because it's a very expensive card. It might not move more than one per minute. And that's something that's a big investment for one a minute that might not even go through and you might still have to fight somebody for it. So personally, that's not my place to to invest and and flip. I like that in the middle, maybe like seven to eight sales per minute, something like that. I don't, what, Mm -hmm. what do you recommend for people as far as like, Maybe the entryway into flipping. What is the best category they should be looking for? Obviously, profit speaks for itself, but like, what do you, what do you suggest? Um, honestly, what, what I've seen a lot of people work really well with is is uh, is they they find a page that they like. Okay. <laughs> so so find a page that they like. They either find a page that they like or look holistically at the data that's presented. So mm-hmm. like, if you're looking right now at profit per minute, um, just kind of sh- sort through and see what's selling for a lot. For me, I don't want to put a, you know, I'm, I'm not flipping Vladimir Guerrero. Like mm-hmm. he's selling for 170,000 stubs by 195 sell. Like I'm not flipping somebody that's 200,000 stubs because I just don't want to risk that much. Yeah. So go in there, filter some things down to what you're comfortable flipping with and then look at, look at it holistically and see what's moving. So like when I really do that myself and kind of mentally look at the page right now, it's headliners. Mm-hmm. The headliner diamonds are are all are, are all on this page, so you know. Well, now I just want to filter down to those headliner diamonds, you know, and just start pounding those. Um, and, and that's kind of what you can focus on flipping. So you can kind of get your set down. I found, at least in general, if you're like actively flipping, you want to probably find anywhere between like five and eight cards in that mm-hmm. for that that area, and just kind of focus on those and just kind of hammer those out. Um, instead of just trying to flip a million of them and then kind of losing track of your orders, you know exactly what you're looking at, you know exactly you're flipping and you're able to track it and follow it really quickly. You're able to know when the price tanks and you're no longer making a profit, you're able to kind of actively monitor. Um, But that's the way I would at least think about it first. And then, like I said, some of my folks on the Discord, they like to, um, for example, go to like the third or fourth page. You know, they'll they'll see all the data and they'll automatically skip to the fourth page they're assuming that there's going to be less people actively flipping those because they're not, you know, actively on the market. Um, and then they're, they're focusing on third or fourth page guys. Um, so just kind of find your niche, find what you like to do, find what fits your schedule um, and, and live with it. Uh, me personally, I'll tell you that I always flip equipment. Really? And okay. that's because I can't, I, I don't actively flip ever. Mm-hmm. I am always passively flipping and equipment has, massive profits. So if you go over to the equipment and you look at those margins, they don't sell quickly. Um, but pretty much every piece of equipment on the front page is a 1300 plus stub profit, every single one of them. And so they don't move super fast, like I said, but if you can catch them, especially when a new innings boss is released and everybody starts hitting the road of the show mm-hmm. and they start make, getting those diamond player packs, Good point. you can actually flip uh, and, and make a good amount off of these. And I, I've made, you know, hundreds of thousands of subs in a day flipping diamond equipment after a, per, after a play innings program release. Hmm. So it's, it's just what I like. It's what I do. Um, you know, other people do stuff different, but it's, it's what I like to flip personally. One of the things I've found too, is, you know, any of those live series golds that are like 82 and above they're moving because oh, yeah. all it takes is like a hot streak of a week for that guy to now be on diamond watch. And mm-hmm. I've, you can see the market adjust. Like there, there was a night last week where Goldschmidt hit two home runs and God did his, it was thrown out of whack because suddenly yeah. they think he's going to be a 99. But you know, if you have the ability to be very responsive to like what's actually going on in the real world, easy way to just sucker people into some stubs, easy yeah. way. I sat on all my Goldschmidt's 
because I think I have a hundred Goldschmidt's right now. I know he's only an 80 or an 81, something like that. Mm-hmm. I think SDS screwed him in the last update, separate discussion. However, with team affinity coming out, number one, his price is going to go bonkers because he's a cheap mm-hmm. gold right now. Secondly, right. even if he goes up to an 83 or 84 in the next update, his price is going to quadruple. So that's mm-hmm. instant stubs right there. So I'm sitting on him. But basically, like anybody who's an 83, 84, like one of the hottest names on shows on in the past couple of weeks has been Kendall Graveman. Yep. It might have cooled down a little bit because I think he hasn't been phenomenal the last few days or so. But if, if you're a high rated live series gold, that's an active flip. That's one that you can just pay attention to and write it out. Yep. Agreed. Yep. And, and he's, he has been, and he's still up there on the, on the, on the top part of the front page. But yeah. We see a lot of people too with it, with it, that are investors that, that look at, look at this data and find this stuff, at least try to find value players that, for example, like their true overall is significantly higher than their current overall rating. Mm-hmm. So they know, Hey, maybe this guy's due for an upgrade, an easy upgrade pretty soon because his his true overall rating is so much higher than his current overall rating that, you know, SDS could just be giving him a little bump and he's going to move multiple overall points. So they'll use that to kind of gauge some of their investments compared to their price. So we see that a lot with investors too. We've, we've also discussed it with some people that run investment pages and investment discords and those kind of things um, about trying to pair some of our data and some of the true overall ratings with something like a fan graphs mm-hmm. on their actual data on how those players are performing. And then you can potentially project at that point, uh, you know, what their potential up- upgrade ability is and if you should be investing them or not. So we're, we've thought about some of that stuff and we, we'd like to get there with it eventually on the site. But for now, a lot of people are just kind of using what's available to do exactly what you said. Find those those guys that they're comfortable putting a lot of stubs into that they feel like are going to be upgraded at some point. Um, and, and, it, and a lot of people make a lot of stubs off those things. I'm and much more of a flipper, though, than an investor. Yes, yes. I mentioned Team Affinity. That's what I want to talk about now. Um, I'm just scrolling through. We're recording Sunday morning, guys, and today is when all of the announcements or a lot of the announcements of who the mm-hmm. cards will be is starting to roll out. So I'm just scrolling through to make sure I didn't miss anything. Right now, the only card that's been announced at 10 a.m. Eastern on Sunday is Greg Maddox for the Cubs, who's going to make me cry. Um, <laughs> he is uh, – corners beware because they will be mm-hmm. dotted, abused – without permission. So that card's going to be a problem. Even with the velocity, that won't be good. His movement's going to be insane. Um, also, by the way, Josh Donaldson is one of the World Series rewards, 99, as I think most people expect. Um, it's going to be nasty card. Absolutely mm-hmm. nasty card. Um, but when we're talking Team Affinity 4, what ShowZone has is the ability to not only tell you, hey, here's what you need for exchanges, how many of exact overalls, this, that, and the other thing. It's great to monitor the price jumps and fluctuations for team affinity um what are some other uses team affinity wise for shows on uh big time is the exchange the exchanges portal um Mm -hmm. that is honestly it's going to be the only place where you can find that anywhere uh there's always these random like flipping applications or tools or things like that that are out there that people use that are kind of you know not show zone but the only place that you can find what are the most efficient ways to do exchanges is show zone so if you go into our exchanges portal uh, you can use the filter button on the top right again and get down to a specific division that you want to focus on. Mm. Uh, filter that to that division, and that tells you who the most efficient players are. So a lot of them right now are your 73 and 74 overall bronzes. Uh, those are the most efficient players to exchange. Uh, and then off to the right, we tell you how many you might need. And, and we recently updated this data point. It used to say quantity per per 25,000 and cost per 25,000 because that was like the general framework. Mm. Um, we, we've adjusted that recently to quantity per division and cost per division and time per division. Um, so we, then you can fully judge it if you were to buy all that player for that price. Um, this is how much that entire division would cost you in exchanges. And it's pretty shocking uh, once you actually see the data, how cheap that you can do those exchanges for. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I remember when we first, this is another thing that when Team Affinity 3 came out, um, we kind of exploded on Twitter for a while because people had no clue you could do them that cheap. Mm -hmm. And we were showing them, no, here's the data. If you use 73 and 74 overall bronzes, you can do an entire division for, you know, five or 6,000 stubs. Mm -hmm. Like it's just the data. Um, And so that's when, that was another thing that kind of helped us take off at least this year was people realizing that. Um, So that's kind of the big thing. And, And honestly, 
since it's coming out this week. If you haven't started buying up your players that you need now, you better do it now. That was because, literally going to be my next point. If you're listening to this Tuesday, yeah. maybe Wednesday, you might already be too late. But like yep. this drops Tuesday morning. And if you're listening to it Tuesday morning, instantly go on the app and start buying stuff up because prices yep. are going to just be a hot mess very, very soon. Yep. I'm, I'm already bought up. I bought all mine last week. Um, and another good part, and it looks like all the prices have dried up on them. Um, but if they release, for example, like a new conquest map, um, you know, that has those pro gold prospect packs in it, mm -hmm. those guys were the best from an efficiency standpoint in every division, right? Yeah, when that was content, con yeah. they were super cheap. They were all selling for quick sell all, even the 84s were selling for quick sell. Um, and so a bunch of the guys in our discord, uh, we were all talking about it and we all bought them all up. So, so there's going to be guys in our discord that are making millions of stubs. Once, once those prices skyrocket again, when, you, when so people start the, buying them up, does that but, explain then the recent spike in a Bryson Stott or a Luis heel where their price is like eight K for absolutely no reason, but they're just like 80 high. What are the 84s or 83, something like that. Right. And it's because a lot of that, we, we bought a, a lot of us bought up all of the stock on all of those things mm -hmm. because they were the most efficient for a long time. So as people were finishing those conquest maps for the shark map, they were quick selling all those golds and, and, and we, and so, and so you just, we just buy them all up. And so, uh, but yeah, that, that's kind of what happens and that's what you'll see in the data. And that's why right now it's all just live series 73s and 74s um, that, that are the most efficient. But if you don't want to buy up, you know, hundreds of those things in time, uh, you can always, again, use the filters on show zone to say that, you know, you only want to look at golds, for example, you know, I only want to buy up golds. Um, it'll still show you those. And honestly, as I'm looking at it right now, uh, they still have some of those live series or those prospect golds that are selling close to quick sell. So I would definitely recommend buying those up if you can. When we're off um, this call, you know exactly what I'm doing. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Load up because yeah. if you can get those cards for a thousand stubs, like you're able to finish an entire division for almost nothing. Yeah. Um, and quickly. So. Mm. And this yeah, is also so much value in exchanges. Yeah. And like not to devalue the importance of exchanges on show zone, but guys, the team affinities this year have become incredibly easy. Yeah. As long as you're a grinder, like you don't even have to do the exchanges. If you'd rather just mm -hmm. sit on your stubs and save them, if you'd rather invest and flip them and still not do the exchanges, but make some stubs instead, you can finish the program. Like, and now that you can do them separate of each other, that was the worst thing. Like you couldn't do TA two until you finished TA one and, you know, it was up to TA3 and I was still on TA1. It, it just, it was not mm -hmm. conducive to people enjoying the game. Mm -hmm. It's, they've made it functionally available for so many people. Now, yeah. I don't know if TA4 is going to look like TA3. TA3 was very easy. I think people were done with it in like three hours. Like they were done. Yeah. Um, TA4 might go back to that 150 point system. I kind of hope it does because I like something to grind for. And at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I'm not going to want all 30 cards. I'll just cherry pick the ones I want um, mm -hmm. to get them all. Eventually, there's probably going to be a collection, I would guess. Maybe that's where we get our Hank Aaron finally. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but sidebar, Maddox being the Cubs guy leads me to believe that maybe Aaron is still the, the Braves guy. I don't know. Um, but TA, uh, TA4 is going to be very interesting this week. It is a heavy content week. World Series rewards, like we mentioned on Tuesday. Uh, it's not updating on Monday like it usually does because of Labor Day. I'm assuming that's that's why they mm -hmm. decided to do it that way. Um, I mean, Thursday will be our normal Tops Now release, which, by the way, Tops Now is suddenly becoming like the place to get the best free team. Yeah. Also, fantastic Without flips. A doubt. Fantastic flips when they first come out because people are just like so. Like myself, I'll finish the the Tops Now program pick my three cards, and then I'll immediately put buy orders in for the other cards I don't have. Because mm -hmm. you know you need them for monthly awards, which also, by the way, comes out this week. Um, mm -hmm. But people are active on tops now. And oh, if yeah. you can get the week or the week before of the cards that were released, they'll move, and they'll move fast. Um, yeah. you could have been the hottest flips all year. Yeah, you could passively flip those older ones, but – passive like the textbook definition of passive because they might not move quickly mm -hmm. um yeah tops now has been wild this year yeah it's been crazy it, 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 there's there's people that still to this day in our discord are flipping tops nows all the time because it's just they're always moving they're mm -hmm. always moving people are always always buying and selling those things so 
they love constantly flipping tops nows. And this week's event made tops now actually like necessary. Yeah. So they were moving like uh, yeah. Moustakis's price went sky high. Um, I don't know. Every price went sky high. It was crazy. All of them did. Yeah. And so I finished the event program because I like to grind those out. If you're going to give me free packs where I can get disappointed, I'm down. <laughs> so I think I pulled a Juan Soto, which was my best pull. Actually, no, I lied. I'm sorry. Out of a standard pack, I pulled the milestone Jason Kendall, which I was like, holy. And I didn't have that one yet. So it was great. Yeah. And I'm keeping it for nice. questions because there should be another one. Um, but I instantly sold the Altuve and the Darvish because I finished it within a couple days. Get my free stubs there. I'm not sure if you're going to need those for the monthly awards program. I think that would be very rude of SDS to make you it need those. But once their price dies down, I'm going to buy them back up, I think. Yeah, um, they'll probably they'll probably allow you to collect them, but I doubt they would be necessary. You know, maybe one of those things where since they were released this month, they throw them into the collection, but you don't need them. Mm -hmm. I hope. Similar to like but, the the tops, the Tim Anderson tops now, which was just like an extra tops now they gave us. Maybe that actually creates a little wiggle room for the tops now collection this month. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um, everyone's going to be going after that CJ Crone though, so it, it could be. Yeah. that's another day to flip tops now. By the way, if you really want to make stubs, that's the day. Yep, for sure. Um, so, guys, there's a lot, a lot of content this week, and whenever there's content, there's a chance to make stubs. And if you want to make stubs, use ShowZone. It's got the app now. It's got the web browser you could still use. That's not going anywhere. Um, it has just been such a useful tool. Like I said, it's, it's open on my phone literally right now. It's like all the time open on my phone because, like Corey said, it refreshes on its own. You could sort in any which way, ways you didn't believe existed. Like you could do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, Corey, but before we sign off here, for some reason, if people don't know, just tell everyone where they can find ShowZone, both online, social, things like that. Yeah. So uh, the website is showzone.io. Uh, so that's that's our, our domain name. We still own a lot of people, I think, bookmarked the-show-zone.com uh, from the previous years. We still own that. So it still redirects. So none of the old bookmarks mm -hmm. or anything like that that are out there or none of the, the old hyperlinks out there will still go to our, our showzone.io. But that's where you find it. Um, on the app store, just look up show zone. Uh, that's, that's where we're at in the app store. Um, and then on our social channels, our Twitter is twitter.com forward slash MLB, the show zone. Um, Jeremy is always on there, always active. We're always posting good stuff. Our Instagram is the same thing. So MLB, the show zone. Uh, I'm always posting really cool stuff out there. Um, you know, op optimized rosters, optimized lineups, um, you know, tier lists of all the different players, those mm -hmm. kind of things we're, we're always posting out there. We also have a Facebook page. It, we're not as active on Facebook uh, just because we just started it this year. And most people seem to be on Twitter and Instagram. So um, we've kind of been using those. Um, but we're also, you know, with social channels, we're, we're like I said, we're really active on there. We're, we're also working up different partnerships and collabs and stuff with some of the other content creators. So um, we're working on one right now that that should be really cool. Um, so we want to try to find guys that aren't in the game yet, create some really awesome cards, and then also do some true overall calculations on their their overalls on what these cards might look like if they mm -hmm. were actually in the game. So it's going to be really cool. And that's kind of some of the stuff we try to do on the social channels um, just to kind of give people what they want and think about, you know, what, what it would look like if you had a postseason belt round that was released, you know, into this year's game or, or you know, stuff like give that. Give it to me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I, I want it too. It's, <laughs> I, that was my favorite card ever in the game. So um, those are the kind of things that are out there on our socials. So give us a follow. Um, and, and we're, we're, you know, we're always active out there. Cool. And guys uh, don't have a streaming schedule for you right this second. I will post one on Twitter, uh, KDJTV611, when I figure it out. Um, weekend streams have been electric. They've been some of my weekend morning streams. I stream Saturday morning. Been some of my favorites. I feel like there's not a lot of people online at 8, 9 a.m. my time. So come hang out. Uh, Cine hit us with a fat raid yesterday. It was great. Uh, weekend morning streams have been fantastic. As always, I will stream during the week at night as well. Uh, it is September. Just saying, if you want to drop your boy some some gifties. Uh, I'm just kidding. Just come stop by. We have a good time. We talk, we uh, strike out a bunch and you know, we, we do our thing, but uh, that's twitch.tv slash KDJ TV, by the way. So guys, thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Uh, I know we have guests on every so often, but I feel like 
having Corey from show zone on was a real like educational opportunity. Very important. Like stub flipping is something that a lot of people for some reason don't grasp. Hopefully show zone can be an app that helps you. Hopefully just this conversation helps you out. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck with content this week. I hope your stub bankrolls just soar through the moon, hit the max of whatever it was a 5 million subs. The max is 5 million, yep. 5 million. Um, and just, you know, have a good week playing the game. So thank you guys so much for listening. Corey, thank you for being here. Um, yeah, thanks for having me, Kenny. I will talk to you guys yeah. next week.